With over 150 champions now present in League of Legends at the time of this video's release, that means there's 150 passives, 150 Qs, 150 Ws, 150 Es, and 150 ultimates in the game. And if you take these abilities, mix and match them around, there's literally trillions of different combinations that you can make. So I thought it would be a fun idea to make a video detailing the best abilities for each role in the game. The best passive, Q, W, E, and ultimate. In the last episode, we covered the best abilities for top lane, so for this episode, let us get into the jungle. For those of you who watched the first episode, to quickly remind you what the ground rules are for my first choices, I'm looking at the performance of every ability in a vacuum. In other words, if that ability's power and performance depends on an external source, that will not be included in its evaluation. For example, Darius' ultimate Noxian Guillotine is one of the most dangerous abilities in the game against a target with 5 stacks of hemorrhage. But if there are no bleed stacks from his passive, it's a pretty weak ultimate, arguably one of the worst in the game. Aside from that, I'll be choosing the best abilities based on their overall usage and reliability. Certain abilities are way more practical or beneficial in certain circumstances, but those circumstances may be so uncommon that they aren't consistent enough to be in every game. I understand that my choices are not going to be universally agreed on, and with a game as complex and multidimensional as League of Legends, there will obviously be situations where one ability is better than another. Needless to say, some degree of subjectivity will be present, but hopefully the ones I choose will be generally concurred with. Lastly, the pool of champions for each role I'll be sifting through are those of their main role. For example, someone like Echo frequently goes mid lane, but he's mostly a jungler now, so for the sake of keeping the champion pools from getting too overcomplicated, I will lock each one to a specific role if that makes sense. All the introductions out of the way, let's get into it, and after you watch the video, let me know in the comment section below on what your own list would be of the best abilities for jungle. Passives are the bare essence of just about every champion in the game, and it's the defining trait that usually influences the rest of their playstyle. With jungle having the most diversity out of any role in the game, along with being the most incongruous from game to game, this might be heavily contested because in one situation you would want an assassin passive, another situation you would want a dueling passive, but probably the one passive that would be a huge benefit to just about every jungler in the game would be Evelyn's Demon Shade. Not the most imposing of all the junglers early on, especially before level 6, but having almost limitless survivability when clearing the jungle so you don't need to recall or put yourself in unnecessary risk on the basis of low health is a welcome privilege. I understand over the years clearing the jungle early on is a lot less taxing than it used to be, to the point where some champions can perform a full clear without so much as dropping under half HP. But the regeneration is more icing on the cake to what really makes this passive so frustrating to deal with. Past level 6, you gain permanent camouflage, which makes you completely invisible on the map unless you come in close contact with a champion, control ward, or some other form of true sight like towers or the scrying blooms around the jungle. Any person who's played League of Legends for a reasonable amount of time would wholeheartedly agree that Evelyn would be 10 times easier to deal with if they could see her because she relies so much on that invisibility to get close enough to targets in order to slash them to pieces. Put this on any other jungler that can afford to discard their current passive and they will be significantly more threatening as they will now be able to skulk around the map and show up without you so much as expecting it. And while it is possible to intercept camouflage a lot easier than actual combat invisibility, the sheer amount of pressure you can put on the map is immense since usually by the time they know you are near them, it's already too late. Honorable mentions go to Rangar's Unseen Predator, Olaf's Berserker Rage, and Zack's Cell Division. Unseen Predator's ability empowerment through ferocity stacks may not apply to any other champion, but it still provides a plethora of other bonuses since it gives you a surge of movement speed after casting an ability with 4 stacks, and grants you a 725 range dash to your auto attacks whenever you're in a brush, making you that much faster in both tempo and combat mobility. On top of that, the permanent attack bonus you get from Bonetooth Necklace is amazing since it's essentially an AD Rabadon's deathcap passive at max stacks. The only reason why I don't put this above Demon Shade is just because I feel like stealth has a lot more applications in terms of overall macro play, otherwise I would have definitely chosen Rengar's passive for the sheer combat versatility. Berserker's Rage is arguably the simplest passive out of all junglers. You gain 0-100% to bonus attack speed based on your missing health. In other words, the weaker you are, the faster you hit. I chose this because part of what makes Olaf so dang destructive is that his passive combined with his W Vicious Strikes can give him up to almost 200% bonus attack speed for free, which is why he's so good at beating the crap out of you even if he's at low HP. Having a lot of extra attack speed increases your combat effectiveness and clear speed, although its efficacy is only exclusive to fighters and assassins while the value is pretty much lost on tanks and mages. Cell Division would completely take out the competition if we were looking for the best passive for survival, 
Everyone knows the revive part of Zack's passive. He splits into four blobs that slowly, slowly crawl back to the center to respawn. But that's not the selling point of it. Part of what balances out the regeneration is that Zack's basic abilities all cost him health. And even then, he outheals all of that self-inflicted damage. But pretty much no other champion now has health costs, and some of them have very spammable damaging abilities that could get way more blobs out of this. It's safe to say you could be 5 times more tanky with this passive if it was on the right champion with the right abilities. The only downside to Cell Division is that it does absolutely nothing for your jungle tempo or pressure. Sure, it makes it really hard to kill, which some may say outweighs any bonus damage in the world, but jungle isn't necessarily about how tanky you are, it's all about tempo and pressure, neither of which are bolstered by Cell Division. Choosing the best Q for the jungle was pretty difficult as junglers all have the same kind of Q, something that just does damage, but ultimately I decided to choose Hecarim's Rampage. It doesn't win any rewards when it comes to raw damage output, as other junglers can certainly put in way more oomph in one hit such as Kha'Zix, Rengar, or Lee Sin, but having an AoE damaging ability with a low cooldown and mana cost benefits a lot, such as having high damage uptime for both teamfights and a faster clear speed. Rampage can synergize very well with just about every passive I mentioned before, though it would probably work better on Unseen Predator or Cell Division than Demon Shade since the difficulty Hecarim always faced was getting close to his targets assuming he didn't have his E or ultimate. Honorable mentions go to Lee Sin's Sonic Wave slash Resonating Strike, Vi's Vault Breaker, and Fiddlesticks' Terrify. Lee's Q is a projectile, long range dash, and an execute all in one ability along with having a modestly low cooldown of 8 seconds. It's definitely up there as one of the best Qs in the jungle, but the fact that you can completely miss out on all of the ability's damage if you don't land a skill shot makes it not nearly as consistent, since let's be real, every least in one trick misses all of their Qs. That in is primarily single target, and if you take Rengar or Evelyn's passive you can use the stealth or jump to get close to the enemy target anyway. Vault Breaker trades the execute and skill shot in exchange for being a knockback and a free targeted dash. It does pretty significant damage and is overall pretty reliable as a means of offense and defense. In other words, it's less powerful than Lee's Q when it comes to just pure damage, but in exchange it's a little bit more reliable and it has crowd control. Terrify is a ranged point and click hard CC. I don't think I need to really explain why I chose this. Being able to instantly inflict fear on any target could be a death sentence, especially if you have a passive like Demon Shade. That being said, it's pretty weak in terms of dealing damage. It has a high cooldown, so its usefulness only reaches as far as ganks. Otherwise, it isn't exactly too reliable in teamfights or 1v1s, especially since Q is meant to be most champions' damaging tool, and you're giving it up in exchange for just a 2 second fear. Still really good, but it would have been better if it was like a W or E. As you know by now, Ws tend to supply champions with some form of utility such as a shield or a buff, and that applies in the jungle as well. The best one would have to be Lee Sin's Safeguard. There are a decent number of junglers with really handy Ws, but it would have to go to Safeguard for its overall flexibility. A high base shield value even if you decide not to build ability power, and it has only a 6 second cooldown if casted on an allied champion, which makes it quite spammable with a little bit of cooldown reduction. The dash range is 700, considered to be very far for even regular dashes, and again, if we assume the champion we're building has no resource bar, this ability has no cost. Iron Will is a tiny buff that just gives you sustain, but it's a notable amount. At max rank, it gives you 30% Omni Fam. If you combine it with a very spammable damaging ability like Rampage, you can drain tank for a very long time. Essentially, it's just like Hecarim's W Spirit of Dread, only Iron Will has no healing cap against non-champions, whereas the former does. On top of that, it has a much shorter cooldown. Honorable mentions go to Graves' Smokescreen, Nunu's biggest snowball ever, and Echo's Parallel Convergence. Smokescreen does mediocre damage, and the brief slow isn't exactly long enough to make it easy to catch up to a target, but it more than makes up for it by nearsighting any enemy champion stuck in the cloud. Losing field of vision can be abused to no end against targeted attackers, and it can stir up a lot of confusion in choke points throughout the jungle. It is still a really niche use though, which prevents it from taking the number one spot. Biggest snowball ever, yes, that's actually the name of it, is pretty stupid. 10 seconds of being immune to slow, a giant hitbox in front of you that knocks up the first non-minion struck, deals massive damage even without ability power, and is overall one of the best ganking tools in the game. But its value is only appreciated when being used to set up ganks or engages, and is pretty much worthless if you yourself are being engaged on, thus limiting the consistency of this attack. Parallel Convergence covers a large area while providing a massive shield and a stun lasting 2 seconds and change but it's balanced by the fact that it takes 3 seconds to come out, and most of the time you can see Echo activating the ability when he runs towards you. Even if you don't, it's still pretty easy to dodge if you have any mobility or dash. 
but if we pair this up with either Rengar's Unseen Predator or Evelyn's Demon Shade, it becomes much easier to land a surprise stun on one or more champions. I still don't think it's as valuable as being given on-demand mobility and protection like Safeguard, but it has its uses where it can definitely get the jump on a whole bunch of enemies. Most of the time your E would constitute a form of hard crowd control or dash, as a means of offensive utility. In other cases, it's also a secondary form of damage. Either way, for the jungle, your E is a bit of a wildcard ability, and there isn't really a shared characteristic among any of the champions. Choosing one was pretty difficult since there were so many good ones, but ultimately I decided to settle on Warwick's Primal Howl. By and large, it's a very simple ability, but very effective. You receive 30-55% to damage reduction for up to 2.5 seconds. In other words, at max level, you basically cut all non-true damage in half which can make you deceptively tanky even if you don't build any armor or magic resist. After at least one second, or if you decide to ride out the full duration, you can fear everyone around you. Suppose for the sake of argument that you can cast the first part of Primal Howl while still being stealthed by Demon Shade. This means you can surprise people immediately with the fear once you get in range. Alternatively, if you chose Rengar's Unseen Predator, you can jump right into the middle of a fight and go for a huge AoE fear. Or, if you decide to take Cell Division for your passive, you can use Primal Howl to buy yourself time while you pick up the dozens of blobs you've no doubt produced by using Hecarim's Rampage. I would argue that this is one of the more underappreciated abilities in the game. It has a low mana cost of 40 and a decently low cooldown while providing you with one of the highest damage reduction buffs in the game. Honorable mentions go to Gragas' Body Slam and Zack's Elastic Slingshot. In almost direct comparison, both Body Slam and Primal Howl inflict hard crowd control to targets around them. But while the latter grants the user an insane amount of damage reduction, the former becomes a dash that also inflicts damage. Both of them serve their respective purposes pretty competently, but I chose Primal Howl on the basis of being slightly more useful in combat. However, it is always nice to have a free targeted dash, so it was tough choosing between the two, and I would say they're interchangeable. Zack's Elastic Slingshot packs enormous range, up to 1800 units, but it requires you to channel the attack to get any meaningful distance and isn't exactly too potent when used in close range, since the stun duration increases based on the charge time, a luxury you don't have in the heat of battle unless you are exceptionally tanky, which again limits its usefulness to really only tanks. It's also surprisingly hard to hit unless the target in question has no mobility and or unless you are using it as a means of follow-up engage. Choosing the best ultimate was no easy task, because there are just so many good ones, especially in the jungle, but since junglers have to be as versatile as possible to handle any situation they could come across, I figured when in doubt, it's best to go with something that covers a lot of area and has an immediate effect. So I went with the Mumu's ultimate Curse of the Sad Mummy. It got hit with a nerf that lowered its stun duration from 2 seconds across the board to 1.5 at level 6, but an on-demand giant AoE stun that stops dashes is just too good to pass up. The ability sits around 2 minutes in terms of cooldown, so it's not exactly the most spammable, but given how basically the only reason why a Mumu is so scary in teamfights is because of his ultimate, that is definitely one of the best ones, especially if we pair it up with our other abilities chosen. If you took Rengar's passive, you could jump into the enemy team and immediately cast it, or even ward hop with safeguard to get closer in range, which sort of makes up for the loss of bandage toss. For all intents and purposes, a Mumu's ultimate is valuable no matter the team composition, no matter the circumstance. It doesn't have the highest burst damage, but locking down multiple enemies for up to 2 seconds essentially means you can do whatever the hell you want with them. Honorable mentions go to Fiddlesticks' Crowstorm, Vi's Assault and Battery, and Nocturne's Paranoia. Similar to a Mumu, Fiddlesticks' ultimate is the benchmark of his entire kit. A well-timed Crowstorm can single-handedly win a teamfight because of its incredible damage, although I don't consider it to be nearly as reliable as AoE crowd control, most of the time people can walk out of the ultimate radius if they aren't stunned or rooted. Another weakness is that it's only best when used to start a fight, not so much when you're being engaged on. Assault and Battery is a point-and-click unstoppable dash that knocks up and locks down a key target. You can pair this up with Primal Howl to make you tanky enough to endure the brunt of returning fire, and then you fear the target you ulted for more crowd control duration while your teammates catch up. Vi's ultimate is one of the best when it comes to locking down that one major AD carry in the backline or to keep a pesky assassin in place so you can smash them to pieces before they can do anything. I would have actually put this as the best jungle ultimate in the game, but again, instant AoE stun is just a bit better. Lastly, I picked Nocturne's Paranoia not necessarily for its damage, rather the 6 seconds of darkness you can inflict on the enemy team. I understand that this is a bit redundant given that you're already stealth if you have chosen Demon Shade, but ordinarily you would be able to counter a Nocturne by placing Deep Wards, just like how you would against a Zac or Hecarim since Paranoia's range is not that amazing early on. 
but it's one of the most disruptive ultimates in the game. It's essentially Vi's ultimate, but instead of crowd control, it darkens the map. Which in some cases can be more useful, especially in teamfights or skirmishes, since it completely shuts down enemy vision. Honestly, there were a bunch of other ultimates I wanted to put on this list, such as Karthus, Lilia, Echo, Nunu, and whatnot, because there are so many good ones, but then we'd be here forever, so I think it's just best to leave it at that. Someone mentioned in my top lane video that while they agree with the abilities I chose, they may not necessarily be the best when put together, and I concur with that. Evelyn's passive, Hecarim's Q, Lee Sin's W, Warwick's E, and Amun's ultimate are all individually very strong abilities, but together, they may not be nearly as effective. In fact, after choosing this list, I would argue Rengar's passive is way better than Evelyn's, but all the more reason why I also talked about honorable mentions, since there's never going to be a situation where just only one of every ability is the best. What do you guys think? Once again, let me know your own list of abilities in the comment section below if you agree or disagree with my choices, or if you think that's a better selection of abilities, please let me know about that as well. Thanks to everyone who made it to the end of the video, hope you enjoyed it. Once again, if you would like to support my channel, best way you can do so is by liking the video, leaving a comment down below, sharing this video with your friends, and subscribing to the channel. Lastly, don't forget to catch me on Twitch for my live streams, follow me on Twitter, and join my Discord server. Also, if you want to, consider donating to my Patreon. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon for the next video. Take care.